welcome back to my channel. So I woke up this morning feeling very motivated and I just want to make something giant. Like not necessarily like long, but I just want it to be like really, really poofy and I want to make something just really girly and frilly and fun. And so of course I'm going to be using my favorite type of fabric for this kind of project because I want to use a lot of fabric for it. And I'm going to be taking these yellow sheets that I have and using these as our fabric. And if you're thinking to yourself, hmm, that looks a little familiar. It might be because this is literally the fabric that I bought to make into my duvet cover. So, but because of that, that means that there is a whole bunch of fabric left over. So honestly, like one of my fabric drawers under my bed is literally just a box of like sheets that I have been saving to use for projects like this. So I'm always really excited when I get the motivation to make one. And then while I was rifling through my fabric box, I also found some tulle. Um, and also some cute trims and like I said I want this dress to be like really like ruffly and pretty so I also ordered some other ribbons online last night they're supposed to come in tomorrow and so those are like a yellow color that I'm probably going to use around like the neckline and maybe the bottom and stuff and so I'm not really sure what design I want to do yet usually I have like a very clear image of what I'm doing before I start um, and that's not necessarily the case right now which is kind of fun so I know that I want to do like a baby doll dress with a high waist like the kind of silky dresses we were seeing last year um, and I wanted to have some sort of sleeves and probably ruffles. So it's going to be really fun and I'm really excited about it and I think that we should get started on it. I'm really liking both of these designs right now, but I think I'm going to go with this one with kind of like the low rounded back and like the ruffles on the bottom. So I think we should start cutting. Because I was working with pillowcases for my fabric, the first thing I did is I cut off these sewn little borders so that I could open this up and just have a flat piece of fabric to work from. And then to get the most out of my sheets as I could, I cut the bodice out of the pillowcases and the skirt out of the rest of the fabric. So here are all of the measurements for the pieces. So first up we have both of the front pieces and we're going to cut two out of the center and four out of the side. And this is because we're going to use half of those as our lining pieces. And next up we have the two back pieces. Again, it's the center and the side pieces. This time we're cutting four out of both because we're going to put buttons down the back so the center is cut in half. And then here I'm showing you guys the sleeve pieces. And these are really giant and I ended up cutting them shorter later in the video. But when you're cutting out sleeve pieces, they're basically going to be symmetrical. Except one of the curves of these pieces should be slightly bigger when you fold it in half. And that one's going towards the back of the dress. And then lastly here we have the skirt piece. And you're going to cut two of these out on the fold. So they should be a total of 90 inches all the way around. Um, if you have to cut them into two pieces, that's totally fine too. And they're also going to cut four out of our tool fabric. So I like always keep the pieces that have been cut out on my bed, but because this is literally the same fabric, I swear I'm going to lose something this time. It's finally time to start putting it all together. Um, and like I typically do, I'm going to be starting assembling the front. So I'm going to take our side pieces and I'm going to sew one down either side of our center pieces. And after those are done, I'm pretty much going to be doing the same thing to the back pieces by taking our side pieces and sewing one to either side of our center back pieces. And on our back pieces, the kind of taller part of the center one is going to connect to the shorter side of the side piece. And this time we're not going to sew one on either side of the back piece because we're going to have some buttons down the back. So we're going to be making four individual pieces. And now that we have our backs and front sewn, I'm going to take these pieces and fold them over like this. And I'm going to pin together their sides and their shoulder seams. And now you should have our bodies. It's looking so cute. 
Also, I want to give a huge thank you really quickly to everybody who commented on my last video on tips how to fix my serger because a lot of you guys said that I should try threading it in a specific order and I just did that and it worked. I'm so happy! And that means that I can finally serge all of the raw edges on my bodice. So like I mentioned, I'm still waiting on some ribbon to get here that's supposed to come in tomorrow. And I really want to put that around the neckline, but unfortunately that is the next step. So I'm going to switch gears for a little bit and start working on these skirts. And so I'm just going to take all of our skirt pieces and I'm going to sew them together down their back seam. Um, but I'm not going to sew all the way up to the top so we can leave room for a zipper. So I'm going to start about six inches away from the top and sew all the way down. And while I sewed these pieces, I just folded all of my tool layers together and sewed those into one big skirt piece, but then you should do the two yellow pieces individually for a total of three skirt pieces. And now I'm just going to add our two parallel basting stitches all the way across the top edges of these pieces, just so we're all ready to start gathering it up once the bodice is ready. And I'm going to gather the tool layers and one of the yellow layers together at the same time, and then I'm going to do the other yellow separately because I think this will give it a little bit more volume. Alright, so I finally got my ribbon in this morning and one of them matches the color of the fabric basically perfectly and this is the one I was more excited about. Um, but the second one is a little bit more of like a lemon yellow and it doesn't really match so I probably won't end up using it. But I've been taking this one that I bought and this is kind of like a sheer ribbon and I put two parallel basting stitches across it and I'm gathering it up by pulling on two that are on the same side of the fabric. And now I have this super long chain and honestly this took me way longer than I was expecting it to, but it's done now. And I'm now going to start attaching it around the neckline of the dress. And I'm just going to work on one layer first and I'm going to pin this all the way around making sure that the ruffle side that I want up is facing downwards and I'm going to put a basting stitch all the way across it so that we have it in the right spot. And then I'm going to take our other bodice piece and lay that one on top and sew these two pieces together right on top of those basting stitches that we just put in. I just put a little cut down the center of the princess seam right before the seam to make sure we can turn it right side out. And then you can go ahead and flip it and we have a super cute trim. And now I'm just going to take out the basting stitches on the ribbon. And again, I'm also going to serge around those edges. And now I'm going to try on our bodice and I'm going to figure out where I want the buttons to start down the back. And now that I have it marked out where I need it, I have this button loop trim that I think I'm going to use down the back. And so I'm just going to cut a piece that fits in the section and I'm going to open this piece up like this and then I'm going to place this on the pretty side, making sure the loops are pointing in towards the bodice. And I'm going to pin it along that line. And again, I'm going to first base this in place so I know exactly where I should sew it. And then I'm going to fold the other side down to meet it. And again, I'm going to pin and sew right down those basting stitches. And on the other side, we're just going to do that same step without adding in the trim because we only need that on one side. And then we can turn these right side out and you should have one finished side with the button loops and one finished side with just a straight edge. And now I'm just going to hand stitch all of the buttons on. So we're going to start attaching the skirt now. So I'm going to take just the front layer of the bodice and I'm going to flip the other one back. And I'm first going to match up the center of the skirt to the center of the bodice and pin that in place. And then we're going to pin the ends together. And right now we are only working with the single yellow skirt layer. And then we're going to gather the skirt up until it fits into this section. And then we'll space out the ruffles and pin it down. And now that this layer is all pinned out, we're going to bring in our layer with the tool and we want the tool side facing upwards. And then we're going to just do the exact same deal. <laughs> oh, and also when you're pinning the skirts, they should overextend past the end seam just by a little bit so that we have enough fabric to add in the zipper. Okay. 
And now that this is all pinned, I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around. Now that the skirt is attached to the bodice and looking super, super cute, we're going to add in the zipper in the back before we sew the lining layer to the other side of the skirt. So I already went ahead and took out the basting stitches from the skirt and I pinned all of my layers together down the slit that we left open because when we're putting in the zipper, we wanna make sure that we grab all of these layers. And now I'm just going to add in my zipper, making sure to stop right at the waist. Now to help with some of the bulk around the waist before we attach the lining layer to the skirt, I'm going to add a zigzag stitch down the raw edges to kind of keep them all together. And then I'm going to just trim it all down. And that really helps take down a great portion of that bulk. All right, and now we are ready to do probably my least favorite step, um, but it's honestly not that bad. But basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to finish up the backside by taking our lining layer and folding the bottom edge up and then pinning it to the waistband and sewing it down by sewing directly in this seam here. So the really tricky part with this step is just making sure that everything on the bodice is laying super nice and flat. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on pinning all of the like seams together so that everything is nice and flat before we start folding up that edge. And now that everything has been matched up, I'm going to fold up this raw edge and I want it to extend past the seam a little bit just to make sure that we're going to catch it. And then I'm just going to pin it in place. And then once we get to the end with the zipper, the reason we did it first is because now we can just tuck it in up into this and it will look super professional. And once that's all pinned, we can very carefully sew this all the way down. And this technique is called stitch in the ditch. And like I said, it can be a little bit of a pain, but if it's done well, you shouldn't really be able to see the stitches on the front and the back should also now be fully lined. All right, well, it's been a hot sec. I got a new puppy and let's try to work on this dress while she takes a nap, hopefully. <laughs> but the next step is going to be adding on the sleeves which I've honestly been waiting to do the entire time, so I'm really, really excited about it. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take either of our sleeve pieces and fold them in half like this, and sew down this side here. And we're obviously going to have to gather this up to fit in our little armhole. So I'm going to add two parallel basting stitches starting from here, going around the top and ending on the other side. And now we're bringing our dress back in and I turned the dress inside out and the sleeve right side out. And I also marked where the top of the sleeve is so that I can find like the center point. And now I'm going to pin our sleeve to the armhole, first matching up the lower seams and then the top of the sleeve to the top of the armhole. And once these are pinned in place, we're going to start pulling on those basting stitches to gather it into the armhole. And we're going to want to focus most of the gathers right at the top. And then I'm going to pin it all in place and stitch all the way around. And uh, yeah, I'm obsessed. And then we're going to pull out all of those basting stitches and serge around the raw edges. No. So when I 
was cutting out these sleeves, I thought that I was going to want them to be really long, but now that I tried it on, I think I want them to just be nice and short. So I decided where I want them to be like ruffled up. And now I'm going to fold it in half so I have the seam on one side. And I'm going to take my water soluble pen and mark where that line would be on the other side because I'm going to actually add some little buttonholes here so that we can have a cute little ribbon poking out. And then I'm going to take my buttonhole foot and open it just a tiny bit. And I'm going to make two small buttonholes right next to each other where we marked it out. And now I went ahead and I measured and marked out a line all the way around the sleeve, right where we put the buttonholes. And now I'm going to take just this little strip of extra fabric that I cut out, and we're going to use it to make a casing all the way around so we can gather this up by just folding in either raw edge, and then placing this on top and stitching it all the way around. And now that we have our casing, I'm going to show you a quick little trick to get the look of ribbon but the comfort of elastic in these types of casings. And the way we do it is we're just going to take a little piece of elastic that almost fits around the part of our arm that we want it to. And then I cut two pieces of ribbon. And now I'm going to sew the ribbon to either end of the elastic. So the inside of the casing will be the elastic but the outside will be the cute ribbon. And then I'm just going to thread it through our casing. And now I'm just going to cut the sleeve to a length that I'm happy with and hem it. And now I was planning to add a row of ruffles at the bottom. Thank you. But I actually really love the dress how it is right now, so I think I'm just going to finish it up by adding a hem all around the bottom. And here is the finished dress. I am honestly so in love with how it turned out. This is exactly what I was going for. It's just super dainty and ruffly. And this fabric works surprisingly well for this design because I was a little bit worried it wouldn't take super well to the ruffles. And I wouldn't be able to like achieve the puffiness that I wanted, but it actually worked so nicely and it was perfect and flowy. And also these sleeves are like the sleeves of my dreams. I am absolutely obsessed. And not gonna lie, this kind of waistline always intimidates me, but I actually love it. If you guys decide to give this dress a try, don't forget you can always send me a picture on Instagram. I love seeing your creations. And thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!